Good afternoon. Welcome to how to draw a rough portrait using our Prismacolor ebony pencils as well as our blenders. Now, if you don't have these materials at home, it is absolutely fine to use a regular number two pencil or a mechanical pencil, whatever is at your disposal. As for the blenders, you can make your own as I've explained in previous videos. You can use a scrap piece of paper, roll it up and make it look like one of these little guys here. Uh, you can use a Kleenex without the lotion, otherwise you get some weird textures on there, or a paper towel, anything of that nature to blend and make your values smoother in transition. The only thing that you want to completely avoid is using your fingers. Our fingers and our hands themselves carry some pretty heavy oils that when you apply that to the paper as you are blending and adding value can destroy your picture by leaving oil marks that can no longer be erased. One last thing that you will need other than a blank sheet of paper and your black and white photo is an eraser that is pretty reliable. Um, the one I will be using for this demo is called a kneaded eraser. It looks like Play-Doh and it can be uh, bent up in different shapes, but it works very well as an eraser, especially when it comes to uh, drawings of this nature. Um, so uh, you can get these at any hobby store like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Dick Blick, anything of that nature. Uh, but that's the one I'll be using today for the video. So I'm going to start off with first Looking at my portrait here, pretty serious uh, face of myself. And the way I like to start off my portraits is I start off with a very light sketch on my blank sheet of paper. So my face here has an almost an oval shape. And again, this is just a rough sketch first before we start adding some color. So we have a nice circle here that I've drawn out very lightly, or an oval. Um, I'm also going to draw some of my neck in here. So right under that jawline, I have a bit of a neck showing through. And then on the other side, I have my the rest of my neck, as well as some of my sweater here with a bump. Now the way I like to split the face when it comes to portraiture is I like to make these nice uh, kind of like a letter T on my oval itself where, let me draw this oval just a little darker. My eyes are going to be located close to the top of my head. They're not going to be in the middle, otherwise that's going to look pretty funky. This is just the front of my face in general. Uh, they're going to be about a third of the way down from your face. Uh, notice how that's about a third of the way down another third here, and then you have that little third at the bottom. So your eyes are located about a third of the way down instead of at the halfway mark. Notice the difference there on the placement if it were to be on the halfway mark. Your nose, on the other hand, you'll have a little line place marker close to the center of your face. Your nose is located at the center of your face, and so when you draw, you wanna mark that, and your mouth is approximately just a bit lower there, closer to your nose than it is um, to the edge of your chin. Now when I go to draw in my eyeballs, what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm going to kind of stay on this line and I'm going to draw the general form of my eye here. And mine's kind of an almond shape with a little bit of a bump there at the end. I'm gonna go in and draw my eye here. Now, both of our eyeballs are the same size. They are also uh, the distance between your bridge of your nose here uh, to the other eye is about an eye width. Um, and if you don't believe me, if you have a printed portion of your image here, you can see there's your eye right there. Kind of measure that with your hand. You put the eye in between and then you have another eye right there. So that's about as much distance as you want from your eyeballs. So I'm going to take that approximation, leave an empty space there, and start my eye about right here before um, 
before I place it anywhere else. And that is about the same size there as my other eyeball. I like to measure things out by using my hands and fingers uh, to kind of do a rough measurement on things. My eyebrows are going to be above this marker line here. So I'm going to draw my brows are pretty rounded. And again, you're just drawing a general form of your face before you really get your details going here. Um, let's see, my eyebrows are here again. This one has a pretty prominent arch for some reason. A little mismatched here on my face, but that's okay. I'm drawing what I see on my photograph. I also have a bit of a dramatic shadow going on after my eyebrows. So I'm gonna go in here, follow that dramatic shadow to start drawing a part of my nose. This line right here is going to be the bottom of your nostril, that center portion there uh, that you see on the nose. So that's going to be that bottom part of my nose here. I'm going to bring it up and make my little nostril. Now another cool measurement thing for the facial structure here is that your nostrils actually align with the end of or with the beginning of your eyeball here. So that side of the nostril aligns if you make a straight line upward to the beginning of your eyeball. And that way you kind of know how far and wide to make your nostrils. So here I know that my nostril needs to stop right about there, so I'm going to make that line marker and draw that rough shape in. Um, I'm going to do the same for that side, kind of rough edge there to know where I'm going to stop with my nostril. And that's about the shape of my nose. Uh, as for the mouth, we have a little bit, bit of a gap there. We have the indention here um, between the nose and the mouth. So I want to make sure to draw that shape out before I add my lips. It's always a bit of a shadow there because again, it's a little bit of an indention or a dip going in there uh, to create that portion of the lips. Then we have a highlight going on here. So I'm going to look at my picture and look at the shape of my lips. They're a little rounded off at the top. Now, cool thing about lips as well is the lips, the edge here of your lips aligns with the middle part of your eye. So uh, that's where you know when to stop with your lips so you don't make them too stretched out. So as I am drawing here, I know that with my lips, I'm going to stop approximately right in here. So again, middle of my lips. Still looking at my picture um, as I move along. There's a little bit of a dip there bump here to make that look natural a bump here to make that look natural as well and another indention that comes up um, and now we have the bottom portion of our lip that kind of goes into this area here um, I'm also going to draw in the dark shadows that I see in my portrait. So there's a little bit of a dark shadow going on under my uh, chin there or under my lips where my chin is forming. And again, we're drawing from observation from our photograph that we took, our portrait. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start fixing the shape of my face as well. My face isn't as ovally looking. So I'm going to go in and kind of shape that face out a little more, flesh it out better. I have my jawline here, maybe not as predominant as I just made it in the picture. But again, this is a quick sketch of approximately what I look like in a drawing. Have a little bit of a bump there, a little bit of a bump there, and then I go in at a softer angle on that side of my face. 
I have a pretty harsh shadow that goes from my jawline to my neck there into my hair. And this is where my eraser is going to come in handy. I can go ahead and start erasing some of those extra uh, lines that I made on my face to kind of help place things in the right spot and to make them the right proportion, so the correct size. All right, and this is a general look at what that face is going to look like. Um, I'll go in and draw some hair as well as we go along here. My hair kind of bumps into the top. And it, I have quite curly hair, actually, uh, when it comes down to it. I'm just drawing the general shape of my hair right now. And kind of veers off the page. I have hair that comes in this way into my neck area. So I want to make sure to draw that. We're getting a lot of hair going into this into this picture so once I have all of that set up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking more into my details and start drawing those in as we go along here so let's draw those eyeballs of mine there we have a little bit of skin showing there on the ends And so we're going to start fleshing this out now that we have, again, a generalized drawing of what I saw on my own picture. So I hope this is helpful to you as you start your portraits at home. Um, the next video will show you how to begin the value process of adding the darks, the grays, and the lights into the picture that you have. So for now, I'll work on that outline of your portrait. And in the next demo, I will show you how to begin the addition of value. Thank you very much for sticking around. I hope you have a great time creating your portrait. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and email me with anything you may be concerned with. Thank you.